Hello my friends, I hope you're doing super wonderful and in today's video I'll show you how you can create the super cute and interactive pitch deck presentation in PowerPoint. It has a clickable scroll bar that you can use to navigate your slides. Additionally, there is a table of contents with clickable buttons that will open up even more slides. That's super awesome, well, let's go! Alright my friends, let's jump into PowerPoint and let's start creating this super cute pitch deck PowerPoint presentation. And first of all, here is a little bit of information about the colors and fonts that we'll be using. And if you would like to use the same beautiful colors, feel free, you can see all of the hex codes on the left side of the screen. At the same time, we'll be using two super cute and free fonts, Chewy and Sniglet. You can find links to these fonts in the video description. And by the way, today's tutorial slide design was hugely inspired by the super cute kawaii slides that I found on slicego.com. Feel free to check them out as well. That's super awesome and now let's take a look at the structure of this presentation and as you can see we have a couple of main slides and one of those slides is table of contents that has clickable buttons and I'll show you how we can make those buttons work. And here at the bottom we have a section that I have named menu slides. So these are the slides that are going to pop up when we will be clicking on those table of contents buttons. And by the way, these starting slides are absolutely free and available to everyone. Feel free to download them and follow along. Additionally, a full version of these slides will be made available to all of my supporters on Patreon with membership level of PowerPoint Hero or above. Thank you so much for your support. Alright my friends, so now that we have these starting slides, let's focus on the interactivity. Let's make this scroll bar work. And first let's understand how the scroll bar is constructed. We have this main part and next we have this little scroll handle. We'll make this little handle go up and down just like this. And now let's decide how many slides we would like to scroll down. So we have four slides in the main slides section, that's beautiful. So on this slide, the scroll bar should reach the bottom, okay? So let me just copy this scroll bar. Let's paste it to this slide. And now let's just move this handle to the bottom of the scroll bar, just like that. And now let's make sure that we add the same scroll bar to these uh, slides in between. So let's just copy the scroll bar from this slide and let's paste it to this slide. And now a tricky situation, how far we should actually move this handle on the second slide and to solve this uh, problem, we can actually make four copies of this handle, okay? And now let's just select all of these four handles and let's distribute them vertically so that we have equal gaps between them, all right? And now let's just copy the scroll bar with all of these four handles, okay? So that we can paste it to the next slide. So let's just copy it, let's paste it to this slide as well. And now let's just remove all of the handles that we don't need and let's just keep the handle that we need, okay? And let's do the same on this slide as well. And now the scroll handle will be in perfect position in all of these four slides. That's super duper awesome. And next let's make this scroll handle move by adding morph transition to all of these slides. So let's make sure that we select all of the slides, let's apply a morph transition. And for the transition duration I'm using 0.4 seconds. Feel free to use any duration that you wish. And now let's check it out on the full screen. You can scroll your mouse wheel and the slides should be changing and the scroll handle should be moving up and down. That's beautiful. However, in this presentation we'll be using kiosk mode. You can find kiosk mode in the slideshow settings. And what kiosk mode does, it basically disables all of the mouse clicks and all of the possibility to scroll with your mouse. As you can see, nothing happens when I'm clicking or trying to scroll. And this means that we'll have to add some additional functionality to our beautiful scroll bar. And now let's just double click and select this top part of the scroll bar. Let's just duplicate it. OK. And let's remove the outline. We don't really need uh, any outlines for this shape. And we can choose a solid fill color. OK. And now let's just hit Ctrl K to insert a hyperlink and now let's link this shape to previous slide and hit OK. That's beautiful and in the selection pane we can give a proper name to this shape, let's call it scroll up. OK. And now let's just duplicate this scroll up guy, OK, let's flip him around, let's move him to the bottom and in the selection pane let's give him a different name, for example scroll down. And now let's hit Ctrl K once again and this time let's link this guy to the next slide. So this button at the bottom will be taking us to the next slide and this button at the top will be taking us to the previous slide. And now let's just move these two guys on top of the scroll bar. And now in the fill options let's make them transparent, just like that. Okay. And now let's make sure that we select both of these transparent buttons and let's copy and paste them to the rest of the slides where the scroll bar is. 
And two little things to keep in mind, I'm deleting this bottom button at the last slide, okay? And at the first slide I'm deleting this button at the top because we basically don't need to go beyond those points in our presentation, okay? And now let's check it out on the full screen, let's try clicking on the scroll down button, okay? And we are successfully scrolling down. And now let's go up, everything is working as expected, smooth as butter, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And next, my friends, let me show you how we can make these clickable cards work so that once we click on any of these buttons, additional windows will pop up, okay? And before that, let's just quickly jump into the selection pane and let's check the names of these buttons or these groups, okay? So for example, this first card is called Mission Open, so let's just keep that in mind. And now let's go down to these menu slides and the first menu slide is our mission slide, okay? And as you can see, this whole slide is conveniently grouped into one group, okay? That's super awesome. And now let's just copy it and let's just paste it into our table of contents slide. Let's paste it right here, okay? Let's bring it downwards a little bit and let's center align it. So basically, when we will click on this mission card, this mission slide should pop up, okay? So once again, this button is called mission open and the slide itself is called mission slide, okay? So let's just keep that in mind. All right, and now let's actually select this mission slide and let's bring it a little bit upwards. If you wish, you could actually cover the first window, but I think having those headers is pretty nice. So let's just move it like this. And by the way, let me insert a little a straight line. So this will be like our little guide that will indicate the top uh, level of this second uh, window, okay? Later on, it will be useful. Let's just move it a little bit outside the slide window. And now let's add some animations, let's make sure that the mission slide is selected, let's go to animations, you can try working with flying animations, but I have noticed that working with motion path animations gives the best results. So let's select motion path line, direction left, and now let's just grab this little red bubble and let's move this mission slide outside the slide window, just like that. And now let's jump into the animation pane and let's check out this motion path animation. And as you can see, this mission slide is sliding away and we actually want the opposite result. So let's make sure that we go into the motion path effect options and choose reverse path direction. And now this mission slide is sliding in. That's super awesome. And for the animation duration, I'm using one second and let's apply maximum smooth end in the effect options as well. And this is how this animation is looking so far. That's beautiful. And now let's make sure that this motion path animation is triggered by this mission button, okay? So let's make sure that the motion path animation is selected. Let's go to trigger and let's choose mission open, okay? So now once we click on the mission button, we should get the animation. But as you can see, the mission button is hidden. Don't you worry, my friend. I'll show you how we can fix that. And one way would be just moving this mission slide somewhere away from the first window. But in that case, this animation wouldn't look uh, right, okay? So let's just position it where it was before and now let's go into the motion path effect options and let's uh, choose this option called locked. And what this option does, it basically locks the motion path animation in place and we can move the mission slide itself wherever we want. Okay, so that's super awesome. So let's check it out. Now we can see this mission button, we can click on it and hooray, here comes our mission slide with that beautiful motion path animation. That's nice. And now let's make sure that we add an exit animation to this mission slide as well. Let's just bring it to this starting position, okay? So let's select the mission slide and once again let's use motion path animations. Let's choose line motion path, direction uh, left. And now let's just grab this red bubble and let's move it to the same position where this green arrow is, alright? And this time let's use a shorter duration, half a second should it do. And let's add this time maximum smooth start, okay? And now let's use a different trigger. This time the trigger of this animation will be the uh, mission slide itself, okay? And at the same time, let's make sure that both of these animations are set to locked so that we can uh, move this uh, mission slide outside the slide window and we can see those buttons, okay? And now once we click on the mission button, the mission slide should come in. And once we click on the mission slide, it should close itself, okay? That's super awesome and you can click on the close sign to close the mission slide or you can click anywhere else that you wish because we have set the whole slide to be as the animation trigger. Super nice and now let's add a problem and solution slides to the picture and let's make those two buttons clickable as well. So here is the problem slide and here is the solution slide, alright. So first of all let me just bring back this mission slide to the starting position and here we can use that little line that we have made previously, okay, to help us align. 
that uh, slide and now let's just copy the problem slide let's paste it somewhere right here and let's actually make sure that this problem slide is aligned to the same position as the mission slide just like that and now we can use the animation painter and paste the animations from the mission slide to the problem slide okay and now as you can see the problem slide sits directly on top of the mission slide that's good and let's make sure that in the selection pane we select the mission slide okay let's go to animations let's click on animation painter and now let's click on the problem slide and this way we can paste the animations from the mission slide to the problem slide and now in the animation pane as you can see we have four animations in total okay so the closing animation for the problem slide looks correct so let's just make sure that for the opening or sliding in animation we choose the correct trigger and this is the problem open trigger okay and now let's just select all of these animations and let's make sure that all of them are locked that's good so this way we can move these slide windows outside of the main slide window and this way we can see those clickable buttons that's good and now let's just give it a try so let's click on this problem button okay we can close the window, we can open up the mission slide and we can close it as well. We can open up the problem window again, alright? And the scroll uh, buttons are working as well. Super duper awesome. Alright my friends, so now that you know how it works, let me quickly finish it by adding the last slide, which is solution slide. Okay, I'll catch you in a second. Alright, so all of the slides are ready, all of the buttons should be clickable, so let's test them out. Let's click on the solution button, looks like it's working, that's great. The problem button is working as well and the mission button is working as well. Congratulations my friends, now you know how you can create the super cute and interactive pitch deck presentation in PowerPoint with clickable scroll bar and this clickable menu. And by the way, this is how the full version of these slides look like. As you can see, we have 10 buttons with 10 sliding windows. That's super awesome. We have mission, problem, solution, market, competition model, growth, product, and timeline and team. And as I mentioned before, the starting slides are absolutely free and available to everyone. And this final version with 10 clickable buttons and 10 sliding windows will be made exclusive to my PowerPoint hero level or above supporters on Patreon. Thank you so much. And that's all for today's tutorial, thank you for watching, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you on my next video. Peace.